Hello, hello everybody, this is Tip Top Gaming here today with another Magic the Gathering Arena video. It's my favorite time of the month, Magic the Gathering Arena, state of the game, December, or really just any state of the game. For those of you who don't know what this is, basically they just talk about what's coming to December in the Dece- or what's coming to Magic the Gathering in the December update. Why don't we jump right into this? So for the past couple months they've been doing this thing called the performance check-in, and so why don't we see what they're doing here? As we've done with our two previous State of the Games, we wanted to start things off by touching on our progress with performance improvements. This month will, will be a little shorter than previous as our November game update showed significant improvement in all the areas we are currently monitoring. So before the November game update, these were like the statistics and then after it, they re were reduced majorly. There's still work to be done, particularly for issues impacting memory allocation usage, aka memory leaks. But our code re our code refactor seems to be doing exactly what we hoped it would, and is significantly reducing both the frequency and severity of FPS drops and unresponsiveness. We hope to be get you hope to see uh, improvements, and the December update will bring a few additional changes. So, basically, hey, November was really good for making the game more stable. You'll see a couple more changes, but it's not going to be something big this month. Now, this is not the, like, patch note. So it's not going to be like, we fixed this bug. This is just telling you what's generally coming. And you know what is generally coming? Brawl -a days And that makes me really excited because Brawl is my favorite format on MTG Arena right now. Last month, we also, we also talked about balancing the desire for more on-demand play. Yes, don't make Brawl Wednesday only while also ensuring that there are different and exciting experiences every time you play. However, when it came to all play modes and formats MTG Arena currently supports, there was one format in particular that has been at the forefront of something that players want to see more of. We're introducing a Brawl event with a one-time entry fee available from December 12th to January 16th for 10,000 gold or 2,000 gems. You'll get into the event and receive one copy of a card, one copy of a card we are adding to Brawl. This is our first experiment with long-term event in a past style like this, so we're ultimate, we're already planning to make some iterations based on player feedback and participation in the event. Ultimately, our goal is to do more events like this with Brawl and potentially other formats in the future. Let's talk about the event structure. Now, before we jump into this, basically, they're saying, hey, we used to do Brawl every Wednesday, but hey, if you pay us 10,000 gold for a month, you can play it every day, which... You know, you might be like, okay, I guess that's fair. However, when you really think about it, this this kind of brings in some issues and the fact that the Brawl Cubes are going to be a lot smaller because, and I, I this is what they're trying to do. They, they've they been talking about, hey, we want Standard to be the forefront of MTG Arena. Why? Because in paper, Standard sells packs. You know, basically, they want MTG Arena to be Standard. And they started to walking that back with Historic and they're like, oh, eventually we want to get to Pioneer. And I think that's what MG, where MTG Arena really needs to go. They need to go out and find other formats because, sure, Standard might be the magic format, which really it's not. Commander is. But people are going to get bored of just one experience. And I get they were trying to be like, oh, you know, Brawl Wednesday. And I'm, I'm assuming that their original plan was to like, Draft Tuesday or like historic draft Tuesday or something, which I think is kind of dumb I think that forcing people like on Wednesdays I feel like I can't play standard, but then you know that makes me not want to play brawl It also makes me not want to play standard. So it makes me not want to play MTG arena So by doing this the, the reasoning that they don't want to make brawl permit format is like the cues and like You know we want to make sure that everyone is playing standard and so by doing this, they're basically saying, if you really, 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 really want to play Brawl, you can do that. We're giving you an option. However, it, you, at least you do get one copy of the card. Now you may be like, one copy. But for those of you who don't play, um, it, it, one copy is enough in Brawl because it's all singleton. As well, because this is an online platform, you don't need like three copies of like Soul Ring to put in three decks. You only need one, even though Soul Ring's not on this. This is our first experiment with a long-term event pass style like this. So basically they're like, this, they're calling this like a pass. So it's kind of like the mastery pass, which I think is a super great value, except you're paying 10,000 gold to get access to this queue. And then you're probably gonna have to pay 10,000 gold again. Now, here's the thing. They're trying to drain you of your coins and I'm gonna bring this out a couple more times. Events used to be free in MTG Arena, not like all, not all of them, not like drafts or any of that, but like their limited time events, those were normally free. However, recently they've been trying to drain the gold out of people. They're trying to get more money. And I think you're going to notice that coming up to January, which 
Theros Beyond Death releases in January, they're trying to drain all your gold, which kind of sucks for me because I want to have a big Theros Beyond Death library. Actually, if you look at Throne of Eldraine, Throne of Eldraine, I have the lowest collection of that out of all the recent sets because I've spent all the gold to be able to make videos about them, like the breakdown videos, the gameplay videos, I do all of that, so that means I have to enter these events, which I know you guys don't have to, and so I want to make sure you guys don't end up paying for something you don't want. Now, what they're doing is they're adding Rise the Redeem. So this is, this by the way, this goes from December 12th to January 16th, and it costs 10,000 gold. That is 10 packs, or like almost a mastery pass, and you there is no like a win-loss. Once you've joined Brawl A Day's event, you'll have access to a Brawl queue that will let you play against others all day. Now, this is still only standard Brawl, kind of, but you'll see. Um, every day until the event ends. For everyone else, you'll still have a Brawl queue available every Wednesday, and you can still play against your friends anytime using Direct Challenge. You can also use something like Brawl, the Brawl Hall Discord, which lets you do this basically for free, except here you do get one advantage. You get a copy of Rise the Redeemed, which is a, uh, red. It's a green, white, 1-1 one, one legendary creature elf warrior that says pay 3, tap, create a 1-1 one, one green and white elf warrior creature token, and pay 6, tap, for each creature token you control, create a token that's copy of it that is crazy and a really cool card for commander or for commander and yeah for commander aficionados out there you'll probably be f familiar this will probably be familiar face which is exactly why we're adding rise to redeem to mtg arena for play in both a brawl and historic so they're deviating away from they said you know right here they're about to say in brawl you'll be able to use rise to redeem as your commander or slot him into the deck so it can be your commander or not any into any deck that shares the appropriate color identity. We know this deviates from tabletop brawl, meaning this is not historic brawl. Like, standard brawl has Rise of the Redeemed in it. And I don't know if that's until rotation, If I don't know if that's forever. However, I think that's very cool. However, I think that deviating away from standard, like, it can be good. I think that what would have been better is if you have standard brawl, you have brawl, and then you have historic brawl. And Brawl, Standard Brawl is literally just what you get in paper. Like, they have a best of three mode, even though that's not MTG Arena at its core, they have a best of three mode to cater to those players who like the core uh, gameplay experience. Th then they can have Normal Brawl, which includes these little cards that they're clearly going to be adding every month. Then you're gonna, then you can have Historic Brawl, which includes all the rotated out sets and all the historic anthologies and all of that. And I think that there needs to be event support for all three of them. I think this should be kind of like the play queue, where if you enter with a historic deck, you get matched up against historic people. If you play, enter with a brawl deck, you know, so on and so forth. And so I think that it being part of standard, I'm not complaining because I think that commander is a better format. Having more cards is always better for a format like this that's super singleton based, so I'm not going to complain. Okay. We know this deviates from tabletop brawl, which will remain standard only, but... Just as we are with Historic, we're working closely with R&D to find ways that we can expand, M M expand MGG Arena's available card pool to bring more fun and exciting experiences to our game. What I'm saying, Brawl, Historic Brawl, either way, players who join Brawl Days will receive a copy of him after earning their first win in the event, and Rise will also be craftable for, for wild cards looking for, for players looking for a playset for Historic. So, you'll also be able to use this in Historic which I think is pretty smart um, that they're expanding Historic and Brawl. And so this kind of throws off a statement I make in a video coming up soon where I talk about the future of like Historic Anthology and all that. But I, I think that, you know, the, them adding cards to MTG Arena constantly is a good way for them to earn money. Um, you know, I think that that's pretty smart. I think that it, it can be detrimental to the game because we're at a 10,000 gold, right? Assuming that you're going to pay this 10,000 gold now and this 10,000 gold when it hits January 16th, that, because it, obviously it's going to refresh itself, that's 20,000 gold. And so you are almost paying, like, you're paying 20,000 gold for two months of gameplay. If you notice, this isn't even a full month. Um, and this comes out right before Theros Beyond Death. So what they're trying to do is drain you of all your gold and then be like, oh, here's Theros Beyond Death. And it's, they're starting to run into the problem where paper magic is. They're trying to release more and more products, which I really like. However, they're getting to a point where people only have so much money. And in a, in a game like this, they can start to do this more because it's all fake money, but you can buy it with real money. It's just, they're trying to, they're start, starting to spread themselves thinner, which they said they didn't want to do. They want to be standard focused, but now they have historic anthology. They have these random brawl releases. They have all this. And I don't know how this is going to do. Either way, 
let's jump right into the next thing. I know this has been a longer video. Speaking of historic, let's talk about what changes are coming with the De December update, game update, and what plans we have for the format going forward. Also, I think at the end they say when the update is. Since the introduction of Historic Anthology 1 and the launch of our Historic Ranked queue, we've been keeping a close eye on both queue health and the meta as the format begins to develop. While we're fairly happy with both the diversity of the decks and how many new cards have helped shape the meta, we've identified a few problematic cards the, to the format that we plan on suspending with the game, December game update. If And if that sentence makes you feel furrow your brows in confusion, it's because we're introducing the concept of suspending cards in Magic the Gathering Arena. So that's very smart. In paper, you can't, you have to be a lot more careful because people are investing money, it can be seen more like gambling and finance, but your cards on MTG Arena have no value, and you can get mad that, oh, you banned this. However, they have, like, you don't own anything, so, like, it's a lot easier for them to be like, well, this card's now banned. And that's why Historic has the potential to be wonderful is because they can off-cycle just go ban or off-cycle restrict or suspend or you can't use it if you also have this other card in your deck because it's Arena. You know, in paper, you it's, it'll be hard to be like, so, tell you, so, so, it would be hard to tell someone, hey, you can't, you can, you can use Once Upon a Time, but not if you have Oko in the same deck. No, that starts to get too confusing, So, but for MTG Arena, where it literally just won't let you do that, it's a lot more acceptable. From a gameplay perspective, a card that's suspended will not be legal and therefore unplayable in a format, but our intention is to be more flexible with what which cards are suspended and when, compared to more traditional bandings. Suspe bandings. Suspensions will be temporary measure lasting for a historic rank season, at which time we will either remove a card from the list or move it to be fully banned. So basically, hey, these are like the warning cards. To basically be like, oh, we'll see, and then at the end of the season, which I'm surprised they're limiting themselves, I'm surprised they're not being like, at the end of the season, all of them will be doing that, but we can remove them at any time, which I assume they will be. Um, will basically, they'll either become permanently banned or unbanned, they will not stay suspended. If you are interested in learning more about banned versus suspended philosophy you can, and how they differ, as well as a deeper dive into why these particular cards are being suspended, you should te check out our companion piece aptly named Historic Suspension. I will be doing a video, a different video, covering specifically that. Alright, Historic Events. Now, generally, like every other game update, they basically do these events, and here's not here is no difference. In addition to our Historic Traditional Ranked queue that is currently active, we are also looking to provide more ways for you to enjoy Historic Format in the upcoming weeks. So, Historic Artisan will be from the December 20th to the 30th. I like these longer style of events. Even like this one up here, I saw the 10,000 gold, but I thought it was four days, and I'm like, that's pretty rough. Because if you're trying to tell people, oh, you're paying for, like, the format, and but then you're only giving it to them for four days, that's kind of crazy. Here you have ten days, and I, I think at least week-long things are very good. Because I know some people who can't play on Sundays but have to play on weekends, so then they can only play Saturday. So if the event doesn't run on a Saturday, well, they're out of luck. Brawl? They can't play Brawl. So here, we're bringing the Artisan format, common and uncommon cards only, I did a video breaking down that, you guys should check that out, to Historic next week. Enter for 2,500 gold or 500 gems and play as much as you want. Your first five wins will net you five unique card styles. So these are actually not new cards, these are older cards that are, I mean, they were very, benef they were very influential on the standard of the time. Now, here's a note. Say Gutter Snipe is ever reprinted in Standard with this art, this one right here, you will still have this style. Same thing with Cast Down, same thing with Curious Obsession, same thing with Militia Bugler. So if they ever get reprinted, you will have these styles, and these will probably be the only ways to get them. So, that is something to note. Um, now, I think that, again, you're telling people that they have to pay 2,500 gold to get styles. I actually don't know if I'll be playing this because I liked Artisan as a standard format. However, my library isn't super great with Historic, and I guess that's part of the reason you'd play Artisan is that you don't have a great Historic um, library, so I might, you know, I might do this. Like, we'll see when we get there. But then again, ready? This is December 20th, so a month before Theros Beyond Death. And not even because uh, Theros Beyond Death probably comes out, uh, when is it? Probably comes out on January 16th or 17th. 17th is the pre-release, so it, it'll be out before that. And so you'll have to basically, it'll be like 20 days away from the next set. Here's another 2,500 gold we're taking. Oh, hey, we're bringing back ranked uh, Draft Dominaria, which... 
Yes, Dominaria Draft will be returning with the new year and will follow the same entry fee, event structure, and rewards as our other ranked draft. We know this has not been one of our, the most popular limited environments in recent years, if not ever, and is also a great way for... We know that this has been one of the most popular limited environments, I'm sorry, uh, in recent years, and so it's a great way to expand your historic collection as well. So basically people are like, oh, we like Dominaria Draft, so they're bringing it back, and... Um, Historic Challenge. All right, yes, okay. Historic Challenge will be January 11th through 13th. We will be also introducing the Historic Challenge, a constructed best of three event with a high entry fee and prizes to match. This event will cost 10,000 gold on January 11th through 13th. That's probably when Theros Beyond Death comes out, very shortly after that. Meaning, ready, if you participate in all the events I've already talked about, that is 22,500 gold. That's like almost a month, and, and that's assuming you're only paying for one month of Brawl. If you pay for the next month, you are now paying like 32,000 gold. That's more than a month's worth of grinding coins, getting 15 wins a day. That is crazy. This event will cost 10,000 gold or 2,000 gold center, and players can play until 8 wins or 3 losses. The historic boosters will be evenly divided between the 4 non-standard current MTG Arena sets. So, you'll get 4 ICRs. Um, four historic RCRs and a treasure hunt card sleeve guaranteed. So, if you want, you can get this treasure hunt card sleeve for 10,000 gold. Guaranteed. However, you can also, if you get one win, you get 1,000 gold back. Two wins, 2,000. Like, this one I'm not as mad about because you can win your gold back and you can keep playing it. So, this one isn't as bad in terms of sucking your gold out. It's kind of like a normal draft. Like, I'm not super mad about the Dominaria draft. Why? Because people like to draft. That's not an event that has, like, exclusive rewards in it. I mean, even the normal drafts, I mean, it's not something you feel time pressured to do, and so I think it works better as a format in terms of not feeling like, oh, they're just sucking the gold out of me. Either way, you get, you get more gold and more historic ICRs. Um, however, as soon as you hit five wins, you get a Gaius Cradle card sleeve, which Gaius Cradle isn't currently in MTG Arena. Treasure Hunt is... Um, and so I assume it'll just be like this art on the back of a card, which I really like, and I could, I could theoretically do this. Um, I'll probably do an event breakdown for this event. However, um, that, that could be a sign of what's to come. However, may I mention here, you get 40 historic booster packs if you get 8 wins. This is similar to the net, net decking challenge, I think is what it called, or like the super metagame challenge where you get like 40 packs. However, you know, everyone is net decking. So, they, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, deck sorting. This one, okay, so if you, so everything we've talked about has been spend gold or wild cards on any of this. Now, why don't we jump into something that affects everyone, whether you pay or not. Deck sorting. Do we need to say more? As we continue to expand the variety of events and formats that MTG Arena is looking to support, we are aware that it has become quite daunting to keep track of which new deck is your new new deck versus that new deck that is your new brawl deck and when the actual deck you were thinking of was imported deck number three, and I definitely agree with this. <laughs> Questionable decisions regarding deck naming aside, starting with the December game update, you'll be able to sort your decks by format, color, identity, alphabetically, or last modified. Search for them by name or a combination of the above. So you'll be able to be like standard alphabetical, which I think is very brilliant, or search by only my white deck. So if you have a if you have a deck and it, or a quest and it's like I need to use a deck with white in it or white and blue, I think there probably should be that multicolored button where it's exactly the colors you choose. But I'm not gonna complain. Well, we have a few more quality of life improvements planned for the December game update. This is the one we've been wanting to call in particular because we know it's been something players have been requesting for some time. The December game update is only a few short days away, December 12th. So normally these things come out on either a Thursday or a Friday, and then a week later, that's when they come out. However, this is coming out in two days. Now, if you notice, this is coming out really early December. And I assume that's because Theros Beyond Death, the pre-release is on the 17th. Normally they like to give people a week before that, so that'll be the 10th. And so they really need that month. They, they try to do a month. So I'd, I would expect this month to be a smaller month in terms of things coming. Now, what's interesting, though, is that they said by the end of the year, MTG Arena will be on Mac. That's actually my most popular video, them talking about that. And by the end of the year, MTG Arena will be on the Epic Game Store, and I see nothing about this in the December game update. Now, they have in the past been like December game update 2 or like State of the Game 2. However, I find that very unlikely here. I wonder if that's something that they just have to push and they're just not announcing it, or if it's something we'll see more details about later on, not in the state of the game. 
Alrighty, guys, that's been a really long video. Remember, I'm going to do a video covering the historic suspension that happened today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe. It's been a very long, you, you know, this post is actually one of the shortest state of the games ever, but I wanted to really break it down so you guys really understood what was happening. Alrighty, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!